and 30 plus years of refinement of this Miata formula can be properly explored and enjoyed. <laughs> hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 Mazda MX-5 Miata Grand Touring Manual. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. Introduced in 2016, this ND generation Miata hasn't changed all that much because it hasn't needed to. Mazda nailed this design. It's just a pleasingly attractive small car. Up front is that signature slightly smiley grille with all functional ventilation. The headlights are LEDs on this Grand Touring model with incandescent turn signals and LED DRLs, above LED fog lights. This one is painted in Mazda's hero color, Soul Crystal Red. It's a color that plays with the light, going from a brighter hue to a more deep crimson. I love it. At the side, we have a set of 17-inch dark gray painted wheels wrapped in Bridgestone Potenza summer tires, sized 205 section front and rear. The profile just does so much with such a small footprint. It's got a relatively long curved hood, a beautiful crease that starts at the door, and the folding fabric top tucks neatly in line with the rear deck lid. It also looks good with the top up. At the back, the Grand Touring trim lacks the lip spoiler of the club trim, but retains the LED combo tail lights with incandescent turn signals, above LED reverse lights, and there are two thin rimmed stainless steel exhaust ports just off center. As I said about the Lotus Amira, there just isn't a bad angle to the ND generation Miata. And I think that's why I haven't even noticed the last seven years I've been looking at this design. So my question for you is which generation Miata looks best? For me, it's the ND. And this is coming from an NA owner. Let me know what you think in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this black leather interior on GT trims with gray contrast stitching, seat perforation, seat heating, and manual adjustments for the seats. There is a Bose nine speaker sound system, including speakers in the headrests. On the doors, we've got some body color matching trim up top, leather inserts, including for your armrest, hard plastics down low, fake carbon fiber trim, two one touch down windows, not up, and power adjusting, not power folding door mirrors. Reach in to pop that trunk lid. It doesn't pop up, unfortunately. And inside is just five cubic feet of space with not a very large opening. So you're not gonna bring your golf clubs with you, maybe take up tennis. Stepping in, closing up that door, which does have smart keyless entry. Little rattle to it. Leather wrap steering wheel, which is kind of large diameter for this size of vehicle. Beyond it is an analog tack right in the center, speedo to the right, and reconfigurable digital gauge off to the left. No head up display, hard plastics up on the dash. And here we're seeing some of the age of this interior because we're looking at a seven inch screen and it's not a touch screen unless you're using the wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto function. Now that is something that will change for 24. They're introducing an 8.8 .8 inch screen. It will be a full touch screen. Below that, we've got a single zone of auto climate, two USB-A ports, a slot here for your smartphone, but it's not a wireless charging pad. With the six speed manual, we've got leather wrapping around your gear shift and the boot and your mechanical handbrake. Here is one of your cup holders. And what's cool about these is that they are movable or you can just ditch them entirely. In the console, there isn't much space at all. Do have the dial to control the infotainment screen along with a physical volume knob and some hotkeys. Further back, there is pretty large storage in here. I could fit my big bottle and some paperwork. And I'd love to talk about visibility or headroom, but obviously with the top down, that's not an issue. So let's put the top up, which is very easy. Just pop this, then there is a handle. You can pull over, prime this piece here, get it into place and then pull forward. That's it, no other adjustments you have to do. And now at six feet, my head just clears the roof. So that gets the thumbs up and I can slide my seat further back or angle it back just a little bit more. So that's solid, even if you're a bit taller. And visibility is still decent. You can see out that back window, there is a blind spot there, but on the Grand Touring trim, we have blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. 
This cabin has all that you need. Not maybe every modern convenience you'd like, like wireless charging, but everything you need. Now we've got to take the Miata Grand Touring manual for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. Vroom, it's on. Hello, cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this drive in the 23 Mazda MX-5 Miata. As you can see, I wore my fun shirt to match the demeanor of the car. Too much? Deal with it. Drive modes in this vehicle are your hands and your feet. There are no drive modes. You make the car fun or you make it fun. Those are your two options. The first thing we are going to do is obviously put the top down because if you think I would have the gall to do a Miata review with the top up, you're watching the wrong channel. So here we go. One-handed, forward, lift up, and pop goes the weasel. It's down. That simple at beautifully any speed your arm strength permits. For us to go, I'm going to push down on the mechanical handbrake and then bring it back up and push it down and bring it back up because this is just not something I get to do much these days so I'm, I'm savoring the moment. And then for reverse, pressing down on the gear selector over left and up brings up a medium low resolution backup camera. It is a very nice wide angle. No trajectory lines for us, but life goes on. And windows will need to go up. Try out the turning radius to start as we do. Straightened, cranked. Oh, that is blissful. Oh, it's so good. I love nimble cars. It's wonderful. Turn signal sound. It's, it's louder to activate the signal than the actual sound of the signal. And that's fine. World famous horn test. <laughs> kind of a joke. <sighs> beep, beep. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> okay, the powertrain in the Mazda MX-5 Miata. It is a two liter non-turbocharged four cylinder making 181 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque. That is routed through your choice of a six-speed manual transmission or a six-speed manual transmission. Really, those should be your only options in this car. You should choose the six-speed manual because it is a phenomenal gearbox. I recognize that on paper, there's also a six-speed automatic. Don't choose it. If you're buying a Miata, then you should be doing so because you like driving. And why would you leave a great transmission like this one on the table and just get the automatic? Why? It's a phenomenal gearbox. The throws are short and precise. The clutch engagement and release point are also easy to finesse. Anyone, relatively, anyone can hop behind the wheel of this car and be quickly up to speed with things. And because peak torque comes in at just 4,000 RPM, but the power delivery is so linear, you never feel yourself wanting for low-end grunt. You just get up to speed so easily, and the brake pedal is a cinch to just modulate yourself down to a very smooth stop. Now, we're talking about ride quality in the Grand Touring model, which has the same suspension setup as the Club, meaning you get the Bilstein passive dampers and sport tune springs. Even though we're not dealing with a more sophisticated adaptive suspension or even three mode position dampening, the ride is so pleasant. You feel the energy of the car. It feels alert and ready, but the dampening maintains this composure as you're driving so that you never feel like you're sacrificing anything to have this sports car vibe to it. It's just, it's just fun. It's fun even when you're just putzing around town. And the steering even, for micro adjustments like this to keep on the curve of a road, is pleasant to operate. So again, just making your way around your city, 
you're happy, you're doing so with a smile on your face and wind in your hat. It's a beautiful thing. Speaking of that wind, as speeds pick up, with the top down, you are going to have to deal with that buffeting, the thump, thump, thump noise. But if you didn't buy this car to interact with the elements a little bit, why did you buy it? This car is about putting the top down as much as humanly possible. Gosh, and it's good at that. How do you not drive this car with a grin on your face? Even in traffic, even in a commute, you're just sort of like, I'm a little extra happy today. My boss just cut my pay by 12%, laid off four of my favorite coworkers. But at least the drive home is nice. Boxster, also great car. Still somehow more serious than a Miata. I'm winning. Oh, you have a box as your passenger. Okay, maybe you're winning. I don't have no, no passenger. I love this car already. We know this review is gonna go. It's favorable. Okay, but let's see how the Miata does when you've left suburbia behind. Okay, the time has come. The road has opened up and I can contain it no longer. I need to give those rear tires a full measure of wide open throttle. So I'll rev match myself, because auto rev matching, like drive boats, absent here, and pin it. All the way to the 7,500 RPM cutoff. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It's only 181 horsepower, but when you only have less than 2,400 pounds to move, it's enough. <laughs> oh, and it's so delicate, but the engine is churning and making noise and the gearbox is being wonderful. You can feel the shove of the rear end. Even just off center, the steering is also so talkative. So you feel confident. You don't ever feel like the car is too light on its toes. Like you're not having some sense of road adhesion. So you can have these speeds built up through corners and never be worried. Never be too concerned that the car will just unseat itself suddenly you're in tune you're connected to the car at all times at all speeds yeah what a little menace and my happy shirt son of my face what could be better Commendable grunt from a dig, but how about out of the hole? Our real world zero to 60 test is next with my race box set up here to record. I'll turn off traction control, rev it out a little bit. Lots of tires spin off the line. And get to 60 in seconds in 6.52 seconds. Miata on the move. Okay, so perhaps my clutch sidestep was a little overzealous, hence all the tire spin and I apologize to the rear limited slip differential for that, but six and a half seconds, just being able to turn up at any sort of stoplight and hit that is pretty great. And independent tests I've seen in perfect conditions with a perfect launch, high fives. In a Miata, high fives. Really not bad. And that's not even the best part of the Miata. <laughs> Stuff like that. And perhaps slightly more responsibly, Activities like this, where the featherweight antics 
and 30 plus years of refinement of this Miata formula can be properly explored and enjoyed. <laughs> With minimal pounds to slow, the brakes don't have to work all that hard. And with the pedals stacked so nice and closely together, you can perfectly flip that throttle and match that rev every single time. Then I'm back to praising this steering, which allows me to telegraph this car precisely as I define it through some very tight and technical roads with sensitivity and communication I crave. It's not the flattest cornering sports car in the market, but even the way it leans in corners can be communication of its own limits. And the platform is just so darn balanced that you have this amazing command over the smallest motions of its body. So you can take it right up to the edge consistently and confidently. Which leads perfectly into my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 23 Mazda MX-5 Miata is frolic, meaning playful or cheerful action. Because you don't so much drive a Miata as you do frolic in it. Pricing and competition are just ahead, but first let's discuss top speed and fuel economy in this Miata. Top speed is 140 miles per hour, and the fuel economy is 26 mpg in the city, 34 on the highway, and 29 combined. 29 is also the starting figure for the MX-5 in sport trim, or it's $34,000 for the GT, and this one is a little more expensive with that beautiful soul crystal red paint. Had to put the top up for at least a second, so you can hear what it's like in terms of ambient volume in here at 60 miles per hour. So I'll quiet up now and we'll listen for the NVH level. All right, so it's not a luxury cruise, but it's not so loud. There's some tire noise, there's some wind noise, but I could tolerate this. Day in and day out as a commuter, I could deal with it knowing that in exchange I'm getting such a great driving car and ride compliance that doesn't punish me. Okay, back to the competition and please don't come at me. I just am hand picking a few options. There are many different vehicles that compete with the Miata. We're just gonna go with these. The Toyota GR86, that one starts at $29,500. It makes 228 horsepower, gets to 60 in 6.1 seconds, and gets fuel economy of just 22 combined. There is the Honda Civic SI, if you want a sedan. That one's $30,000, makes 200 horsepower, gets to 60 in 6.1, 6.8 seconds, and has fuel economy of 31 combined. Or if you want a convertible, just throw one in there. We've got the Mini Cooper S convertible, starts at $33,000. It makes 189 horsepower, gets to 60 in 6.3 seconds, and has fuel economy of 27 combined. They're all great cars, and what's better for you may not be what's better for me, but because it's my channel, I'll tell you what's better for me. So, I would cut the Mini Cooper, just because its dynamics are not as refined or as sharp as the Miata, and I would cut the Civic SI because, while more practical, it's not as playful as this car. But the GR86, that's really tough really tough. It has more power. It would be slightly quicker around most racetracks in stock form than a Miata. But the fact that in the Miata you can throw the top down at a moment's notice and enjoy the California sunshine and then in the second moment just go rip it around a canyon road is very, very compelling. I, uh, I don't want to pick between the two of them. It really just depends on the day of the week you're asking me and the weather outside because that GR86 is phenomenal if you haven't seen my videos multiple of that go check those out but today right now with this weather I'm saying Miata 
Which would you guys choose though? Would you get the Toyota GR86? Would you have the Honda Civic Si? Would you get the Mini Cooper S convertible? Or would you have this Mazda MX-5 Miata? Let me know in the comments. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'll see you again next time. Yeehaw!